Over the last while, I've been getting a bunch of questions about Odin and Raylib, how they fit together, how Raylib works internally, and whether you should even use these tools at all. So today I'm answering four common questions, and along the way, we'll tease apart what really matters when choosing tools. So Joseph Frano left a great question on one of my Odin videos. He asked, how does Odin reconcile the built-in linear algebra types with those provided by Raylib? That's actually something I struggled with a bit early on. And in fact, I looked at some code from a few years ago, and it's evident that this confused me. I was using a custom VEC3 type that I made myself. I was using a VEC3 from the math GLSL package. And then in a few files, I was using Raylib's Vector3 type. Um, once I took a look at the bindings, Raylib's bindings, it became obvious. They all refer to the same underlying types. A Raylib Vector3 is actually the same as an array of three floats, which is the same as a Vec3 type in GLSL. Yeah, so now I just import Raylib. I alias the types to a more convenient name. Uh, Vec3 for Vector3, Rect for Rectangle and mat4 for matrix, for example. Uh, but that brings up another question uh, that Chimekes, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, asked on my uh, command buffer video. Uh, they asked, I haven't looked, but isn't this what Raylib does internally too? Talking about command buffers. I used to be pretty hesitant to read the internals of library code. And that was because it was often written in crazy paradigms that I couldn't understand or that I didn't understand. For example, you know, heavily object-oriented code to the point where you'd have to trace through a dozen function calls in a dozen different files to finally find the code that does something, and you have to keep that all in your head. Uh, but when I started using Raylib, man, it was a breath of fresh air. The code is really straightforward and readable. If you go to the Raylib source, and you check one of the draw functions, and you trace it back, well, you're going to find something called RL draw call, which is a type that's stored in an array, and it's a command buffer. Yep, totally right. Now, a long-time viewer of this channel, Vipandris, has asked another question here. And they ask, I'd love to hear why you switched to Odin. I'm currently using Zig with Raylib. I also tried Odin and concluded that I love comp time and many of its features too much. But yeah, Odin is amazing too and way more stable. Thank you for the question. And back when I was using Zig, I had exactly the same problem with stability. I wanted to be productive, and uh, Zig seemed like a great language. Like C, but without the warts. Now, that was back in version 0 0.5, and it was changing so much that I'd often have to rewrite my code, or quite a lot of it. I remember that being a frustration. And that plus the relatively few libraries and my own skill level made it pretty difficult to get up and running. Uh, nowadays, I think I'd have no problem using Zig, but I've come to value batteries included software more. I even use Helix as my main editor for the same reason. There's no setup and everything just works out of the box. Now, embracing batteries included software has reduced friction by a ton, but it does come at the cost of control. How much control you give up depends on what you choose, which brings me to the next question. So unavailable8923 asks, what are the pros and cons of using Odin plus Raylib versus Odin plus SDL2? That's the kind of question that you ask when you're just looking to start a new project and you're not sure which direction to go. Do you want to get something up and running quickly with the knowledge that you're giving up some control? Or do you want to get deep into the weeds and create something bespoke? Now, I've given my opinion on graphics APIs in the past, but if you want the quick version, the custom rendering, and I don't mean shaders, Raylib can do that. Raylib can even do compute if you compile it in GL 4.3 mode. I mean, if you want to specify exactly how your pipeline is set up, then you should probably go for something like SDL2. Or SDL, I should say. There's SDL3 now. Uh, if you want to make games and not just, sorry, not I'm not saying just rendering pipelines, but if you want to make games um, as a priority, then Raylib is going to give you most of what you need. Now, at some point, I realized that every layer of abstraction is a trade-off. Either you spend time writing the tools to make the games, or you spend the time making the games. Now, I spent a lot of time writing a ton of different engines. It's very fun. I even thought of using libraries as a cheating, hence my uh, C99 wheel reinvention streams. 
But now I just go with what the project needs, not what my ego wants. So for teaching and for prototyping and even making games, I go with Odin and Raylib. And in the future, when we want to build something more graphically ambitious, probably in 3D, then we'll probably switch to a custom renderer at that point. So if you take anything away from this video, then I think your tools should serve momentum and not ego. Choose the ones that cause the least friction and keep you building while maintaining the control that your project needs. So thank you for the questions. And uh, until next time, stay curious and keep building.